I know which one is the real dad? I, we, we never switch. Wait, wait, we don't even look the same. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dumbest things Chris Griffin from Family Guy has ever done. What are you doing, kid? Those aren't free. Oopsie poopsie. Oh, God bless you. Help yourself. For this list, we're looking at scenes in which Chris Griffin's dim-wittedness is extremely apparent and makes us question how he is able to get through his day-to-day -day life. Did you see your favorite dumb Chris Griffin moment on this list? Let us know in the comments. Hey, Mojoholics. For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com slash play. Number 10. Failing to do a proper cutaway. Family Guy is known for its cutaway humor, and usually the characters are able to set up the humorous scenes for us perfectly. Ooh, I like when Dad talks tough. He sounds like Dirty Harry. When Chris is having dinner with his family, he establishes a cutaway in which he is supposedly having an even crazier dinner than this one. This is the craziest meal I've had since I had lunch at Tommy Sullivan's house. What we see instead is a boring, unfunny cutaway and Chris failing at something that literally every character on the show does seamlessly. This prompts Chris's parents to break the fourth wall and scold their son for his shortcomings. That was just awful, Chris. Terrible. He is not ready for flashbacks. No, he is not. We love hilarious flashback scenes and characters acknowledging their own show, but seeing poor Chris fall flat due to his own stupidity never fails to tickle our funny bone. Number 9. Stewie's Concussion when Stewie is misidentified as a girl, he decides to join the football team to prove his masculinity, despite his small stature and lack of athletic ability. What's up, dudes? Stewie, what the hell is all this? Uh, only the most manly thing ever, a little something called American football. Is that a Michael Sam jersey? It goes about as well as you'd think, and he ends up with a nasty concussion. You do me an honor, Lieutenant but my dance card is full. With mismatched pupils and hallucinations of ringing phones, it's pretty clear that Stewie is in bad shape. Brian and Chris try to decide how to best handle the situation without getting themselves in trouble, and Chris chooses just about the worst solution. But you can't make a helmet for the inside. <laughs> Chris, are you crazy? Shh, let's just let him sleep this off. He hits Stewie to try to deconcuss him, and we can't help but wonder how many times Chris might have been hit in the head if he thinks that this is the best way to fix a concussion. Number 8. Raccoons Steal the Camp Food The personalities of the main characters in the show have ebbed and flowed throughout the years, but the creators let us know early on what Chris was all about. Oh my god, my fish is gone! And he robbed me! This is evident late in season two, when Chris and Peter, along with Peter's friends and their sons, go on a camping trip. Chris, you are responsible for guarding the camp while we're fishing. You got it, Dad. You can count on me to- While keeping the food secure from wild animals may be a relatively simple task, Chris fails at it in tremendous fashion. Not only does he let raccoons eat their provisions, he makes a flipbook of them doing it. The raccoons were here, see? Ooh, we're a bunch of sneaky little animals. We're gonna wreck this food and eat it because we're naughty. And then there's a guy. Let's get him in trouble with his dad. Ha ha ha. His blockheadedness shines as he is clearly proud of his artistic creation, while everyone else feels the exact opposite about the fact that they are now going to go hungry. I failed you as a father. From now on, Joe will be your father. Cleveland? I'll teach the boy. Number seven wrestling a lamp. Chris lacks a basic understanding of the world, and in this scene, we're shown that he doesn't understand that inanimate objects are, well, inanimate. Mr. Shackleford says if I don't learn it, I won't be able to function in the real world. Peter easily tricks Chris into thinking a lamp hit him in the back of the head to avoid taking the blame. Despite the fact that his father's obviously the culprit, Chris is furious with the lamp and hits it right back. I don't know, Max. The kid's not exactly an honor roll student. Watch. Hey, he did it. Gotcha. Maybe he needs to work on his smarts as well as his anger skills, but we can't help but laugh at his idiocy in this moment. I have faith that Chris will grow up to be a real mensch. Number 6. National Anthem It's clear from the episode that none of the Griffins are the sharpest tacks. Okay, everyone put the sunblock on now, so when we get off the plane, we go right to the park. Wait, why are we on a plane? When they decide to move to Italy, they initially love it so much that Peter decides to burn their passports and stay forever. 
but their finances have different plans and they eventually have to go home. I think maybe it's time to go back to our real home in Quahog. But I thought you loved Italy and Italian pita and Southern Italian pita. Olive oil! In an attempt to prove that they're really American, they're tasked with singing the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see? All of the Griffins are able to do it except for the eldest brother. And I, I will always love you. Instead, we see him belting out Whitney Houston's classic version of I Will Always Love You. And while Chris is technically wrong, singing this song as an anthem feels so right. Number 5. Korean or Spanish When Chris meets Isabella at a water park after sticking her bikini top in his shorts, the unlikely duo actually hit it off. Okay, you're on. Here's my number. When the two go out for spaghetti, Lady in the Tramp style, he tries to impress her by speaking her language, which he thinks is Korean. But she reveals she is actually Mexican. What language is that? You're Korean, are you not? No, I'm Mexican. She's later deported back there, so it's really a shame he learned the wrong language as he eventually has to go to Mexico to find her. But we're impressed that he was able to snag a girl as great as Isabella, and that he even learns a bit of Korean. So we also have to give him credit where it's due. They saw. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. A room with free people. Chris clearly doesn't understand the very basics of life, so when he takes Stewie to the hospital after he single-handedly worsens his concussion, he misunderstands what a nursery is. Look how peaceful he is. I wonder what's going on in that little head of his. Upon seeing the room full of infants, his lack of intelligence is glaringly obvious when he assumes that this means the babies are up for grabs. He shows off his new find to Stewie and Brian and we can't help but laugh at the excitement he has for this discovery. Chris, what the hell? There is a room where you can go in and just get free people. Yeah, you should give that back. It's a good thing Brian redirects him and saves Chris from himself, and the poor crying baby for that matter, because that could have been a pretty bad look if he would have gotten caught. You can play the music louder, but you can't silence the truth! Number 3. The Toaster Computer It's no secret that Chris comes by his dim-wittedness honestly as Chris proves that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. When Peter discovers old videos of himself as a teen, he realizes that he and Chris are eerily similar, and he wants to stop his son from going down the same path. Listen to me, Chris. I'm a failure in life, and that's all I'll ever be. But it's not too late for you. I won't let you go down my path. Peter proclaims that he wants Chris to be a success, a word that Chris is unfamiliar with. So he runs to the kitchen to look it up. Computer, what does success mean? Chris, let me know when you're done with the computer. The only problem is, both he and his father think the toaster is the computer. And we're scared to know what happens to the actual computer when the Griffin men are wanting some toast. Sorry, Peter's using all the outlets. Toast house. Number two, getting on the Titanic. Stewie and Brian have good intentions when they try to help Chris study for his history test. But when Chris thinks that we have nothing to fear but fear itself was spoken by Scooby-Doo, they know they need to step it up a notch. Wow, Chris, you, uh, you really don't know history. I know, and if I fail ninth grade, I won't amount to anything. Stewie uses his time machine to show Chris various points throughout history, but that's still not sticking with him. Come on, guys. We're getting Oklahoma, Arkansas, Nebraska, Kansas, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Louisiana. What are the chances all those states suck? Chris ends up running away and boarding the Titanic, oblivious to the ship's fate. If I'm such a moron, then how did I get on a fancy boat? Eventually, Stewie and Brian save him and actually manage to alter the future just enough that Chris ends up getting out of his test anyway. Hey, everybody, I'm Teacher Doug, and I don't believe in tests. Yay! But this entire episode proved that it's easier to accept Chris's weaknesses than try to help. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Forgetting His Name It's pretty clear that Chris doesn't have a grasp on a lot of things, but we thought that he at least knew his own name. 
When Peter starts taking business trips, he becomes more refined and worldly, which causes him to start using language that we're not used to hearing from him. My brain is awash with theorems and profundity and abstractions that I can pontificate upon at length. He even replaces the TV in the living room with a bookcase, which leads to another instance of Chris being confused beyond belief. Mom, Dad, the TV's broken! Actually, Chris, I got rid of our television. But the most shockingly stupid moment of all came when Peter returns home and Chris asked him how it went, which led to Chris acknowledging that he didn't know the word Chris. How were all your business trips? Oh, exemplary, Chris. I don't understand what either of those words mean. One of them was Chris. We, along with Stewie, are still shocked, to say the least. Brian's a wolf cat. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.